Hey guys, one of my favorite subjects in the New Testament is in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And it underscores what Jesus said in John 10, 10, that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He, Jesus, the good shepherd, the Messiah, the lamb slain before the foundations of the world, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, comes in on the scene. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to open up the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free. And he says, if any, Paul the apostle says about Jesus, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone has bought into it, submitted to him, surrendered to him, humbled themselves, as many as receive him, John 1, 12, to them he gives the right or the power to become the children of God. There's a, an empowerment. There's a spirit of adoption that he brought. And not a spirit of fear leading to slavery again, but a spirit of adoption where we cry out, God, you're my father. I, you've connected me. You've brought me back. You went out and found me. One time when I was in Boy Scouts, Oh, I, I wandered off from the camp, and the camp uh, leader called my father. My father left work and drove way out to the camp, and they were looking for me. And when I came back, there was my dad, and he and the camp leader, the camp Boy Scout leader, they were looking for me. And uh, God seeks and saves that which is lost. He sent Jesus on a dispatch to to go out and find the stray sheep of the world. All we like sheep have gone astray, each to our own way. That's the, that's the selfishness, the collateral damage, and the human condition. We've all sinned and all fallen short of the glory of God, and all we like sheep have gone astray. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It's a, it's a pathetic and terrible position to be in, and that's why... The appeal of the good news, particularly this right here, that if any man, woman, or child is in Christ, this person is a new creation. You could have been a meth addict or, or a crack addict or a heroin addict. You know, you could have been disoriented in your identity and you could have just been harsh and angry and, and, and brutal and and uh, Paul the Apostle was harsh, angry, and brutal, and it describes his pre-Christian life, religious but not right with God, and harsh. Uh, there's hope, you guys. You know, as you watch the news cycle, whatever, whichever broadcast you watch, whatever, it's, it, 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 it underscores the depravity of man, the fall of humanity, the lostness of our, of our world, and the necessity to tap into a rescuer. You know, Colossians 1.13, he rescued us, Jesus rescued us from the dominion or the domain of darkness, and he transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. In, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says we're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not according to works. Otherwise, we'd be able to boast. So many self-actualization religious tracks, you, you end up you know, going through these processes on, toward enlightenment, and you brag about how you've achieved this. Or you brag about how humble you are, that you humbled yourself to achieve this, but really it only goes like this. The only thing that can keep that break this just perpendicular pattern of lostness is the resurrection redemptive work of the one who ascended and rose again and tapping into him. <laughs> I'm holding on to your coattails because you're going up. I want to go up. I don't want to stay stuck. I got delivered in a swimming pool when I was a kid. I was drowning in a pool and a, a person, you know, swam over and pulled me to the side of the 
of the pool, I was so grateful. I can't tell you how good I felt, how panicky I was and helpless I was, weakened to the point where I couldn't push up anymore. I was starting to go under. And this boy saw me, this, uh, this teenager. I was a little kid. And I am so grateful he turned away from flirting with the girl and he went over and he noticed me and he got me. I, I owe everything to that guy and to the God that motivated him. And uh, I know another story about a, uh, a woman who was coming home from work and the traffic was backed up on the highway so she took a side artery road and then that artery road had a had a coffee shop, but she was going to go into the drive through but it was packed and thought, no, nah, I'll just go home. Went home and found her husband on the floor uh, overdosed. And, and they said it was within two to five minutes. Uh, they couldn't have revived him. Well, that would be God redeeming somebody from the pit. You know, these deists that say, well, maybe God created everything, but he's not involved with humanity anymore. That is not the message of Christianity. I'm not a deist, I'm a theist, meaning there is a God who is a very present help in the time of need. And whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, he left the splendor of heaven, came to this fallen, mixed up world during the Roman occupation, of the, of the Mediterranean area, uh, born of a virgin, fulfilled all the Hebrew prophecies concerning uh, who the Messiah would be, what he would do, and he suffered and he died for your sins and mine so we could be rescued, saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not according to works, lest any man should boast. And I'll finish with this. Uh, in verse 37 of chapter 8 of Romans, in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. In all these things in life that you and I face, marriage problems, career issues, finances, struggles with your kids, apathy, temptation, sin. We have a cure for, for it all. We have help from God. You can go to him and say, God, I need help. My marriage, my wife and I, are, we're not, we need to get on the same wavelength. Help me, Lord. Your kids, Lord, I, God, I'm, I'm trusting you to deliver them from temptation and heal their hearts and renew their minds and draw them to you, O oh God. And for a nation, O oh God, I pray you would move on my country that I live in. If you live in Poland, pray for Poland. If you live in England, pray for England. If you live in the United States, pray for America. Where Mexico, wherever you live, let's believe God that in all these things, we're going to win. We're more than conquerors. In Jesus' name, amen.